I've consumed nothing but red meat for 30 days. Yesterday marked my 30th day, so the lion diet. I buy short ribs, oxtail, um, ribeye steaks and sirloins. And that's pretty much what I've survived on um, for the last 30 days. Previously, um, for about four months, I was consuming a very strict carnivore diet, but I was consuming dairy, pork, um, fish and eggs. So, so if you're one of those people that are extra sensitive in the way they respond to foods and you've, you've gone carnivore, you notice some benefits, but you feel like there's a few things that just aren't quite there yet. You still suffer with anxiety to a point and you're wondering, is that it? Is this as good as it gets? Or is there something else I can do? Maybe the lion diet is for you. And the reason why I say this is, Michaela Peterson, who I first stumbled across um, in, in being exposed to the carnivore diet, she's super sensitive and she feels like she only really truly benefits and doesn't suffer when she refines the diet down to just beef and lamb and a bit of salt and some water. She can't really even afford to not be on the lion diet because if she does trip up, she kind of pays for it almost immediately. By the sounds of it, the next day she can feel depressed. Um, she'll have some kind of inflammation or autoimmune response. This kind of tells me that for some people, they struggle with eggs, probably the white. I don't know why that is. I know that there's avidin in eggs and it kind of binds to biotin. So I know some people have reported issues with eggs. So I thought, okay, eggs, we'll get rid of that. Pork, I'll get rid of the pork because I'd noticed that if I have too much pork fat, a couple of hours later, my gut feels kind of heavy. Um, it actually reminded me of how I used to feel when I would overeat on the Western diet. And it's really difficult to do that on, on the carnivore diet because you have natural satiety signaling in the body that tells you you've had enough, which is one reason why people lose so much weight. If you don't lose a lot of weight, you probably just need to get better first metabolically and then you slowly lose weight. Um, so go rid of pork got rid of the eggs along with no fish. And I was usually just having salmon once a week and sardines once a week. So not huge differences there, but the pork I was having every other day. Um, and I was having some dairy products as well. So raw cheese and certain pasteurized dairy products, which I don't think I'm going to go back to. Um, First week I was craving certain dairy. Uh, I feel like that was like my equivalent of dessert. I was only having like raw cheese, um, creme fraiche and like really you know quality yogurts that are high in saturated fat and very very low in the naturally occurring lactose um, so I was craving that pork I didn't really miss actually there were, I wouldn't have minded added bacon to things especially in the crock pot or the slow cooker I feel like it adds a bit of flavor I was cooking in tarlo or beef dripping ribeye steaks and occasionally sirloins in terms of what I would cook on like um, a cast iron pan just sear the outside and have it raw in the middle. It's super important that you don't cook your meat all the way through. If you're only eating meat, you want fat, you want the proteins, but you want the micronutrients that, and the B vitamins and that trace of vitamin C, right? These things are destroyed when you apply too much heat. Um, so it's really important just to be mindful. And if you don't like it like that, honestly, bear with it. it your, your taste buds change, you do adjust, and you actually, you start to crave those foods in that state. So, and I think your body knows, you know, your body's way smarter than you are. Um, this is, <laughs> goes for everybody, you know, like your body knows how to take care of things. And so if you're, you're providing it with the right nourishment, um, it's going to thank you. Mm. I would also cook things in the, in the crock pot or the slow cooker. So I personally love oxtail and I love beef short ribs. Um, usually I put bacon in there too, which I love, but, um, obviously staying clear of pork for a, a little bit. I have experienced, um, Additional benefits again, like it certainly does step things up a notch, like straight off the bat. So it's so, so simple when you just eat one thing, right? So it wasn't like going down this aisle and then I get some pork and I get some fish and I get some dairy and I go over here and get some eggs. And I get... what I would personally do is go to the butchers, make sure I've got enough cooking fat, tarlo, and just make sure I've got enough beef in stock just to keep you going, tie things over. So I would go probably every three days and I'd buy short ribs, oxtail, um, ribeye steaks and sirloins. And that's pretty much what I've survived on um, for the last 30 days. I benefited from not having the pork where I wasn't feeling lousy sometimes if I ate too much pork and it made me feel kind of heavy. I didn't once regret what I ate or the quantities in which I ate it, if that makes sense. So on the lion diet, I don't think I ever felt like I'd overeaten, undereaten. The, the energy was 
if anything, just more. And I have found if I consume too much dairy, especially if it's like quite high in the lactose to what I'm used to, I crave food more. I almost want to snack more. For the first week, you might just suffer a little bit more. But that that's essentially what we all um, adopt as a strategic way of moving forward and solving problems, right? Sacrifice. Um, I always say nature doesn't have sacrifice really in the same way as humans do. It just doesn't call for it. Nature doesn't really make mistakes like we do. They don't oversleep. They don't undersleep. Um, they have their natural circadian rhythm. They have their natural species specific diet. We are the ones that have deviated. We are the ones that have created these really complicated problems in society and just even mental problems that we have to deal with personally on a daily basis. This can be attributed to the food that we eat. I mean, diet is huge. You are literally made of what you eat. Your DNA is being rewritten by every single thing that you consume. So that's so profound to me. That's so important when I look at food and when I understand food and what it's made of and, you know, certain physiological effects and biological effects that those foods have. And I mean, I just know for me that as much as every now and again, I get a nice smell of something I used to eat. Um, every now and again, I do get a craving here and there, but it's it's not too bad. Um, I feel like I'm just more robust as a person. I have that mental strength now and the discipline to say, no, nope, I know what, what that's all about. You know, I know where that leads. Um, I don't want acid reflux again. I don't want bad skin, bad sleep, bad mood. I don't want to, you know, have this, this uh, what feels like this very deep, low depression that I used to suffer from. Um, and I'm just more productive and efficient. I have more energy. Um, I have certainly noticed just that little step up um, when you clean your diet out, even more, you refine it down to just red meat. But if you are still wondering, you know, can I feel better? If you're one of those people, then I mean, by all means, I would say give it a go. Just just try, uh, maybe even ease into it, but you could even transition over into using tarlo if you've not used tarlo and eat more beef instead of eggs and fish. And then I would say, you know, just completely transition over and just commit to, I would say at least two weeks, but if you can, 30 days is great because it's, it's a real challenge, you know. Um, there's something so powerful about a sacrifice and a challenge like that. Um, and it actually makes you feel really good. When you wake up in the morning, you just have more purpose because you've got this challenge on the cards. You know, it's, you, you feel more enthusiastic and you, it's, it's empowering and, and you're in control. That's, that's another thing is that you, you adopt a challenge like this and you, you, you stick to it, you believe in it and you're in control. And it's not about that. It's super powerful to me. You know, show it who's boss, kick ass, get out in the world, eat nothing but meat, and hopefully you experience benefits. I have actually been craving dairy, and if if some of you have um, watched some of my other videos, you may or may not know that I have a surgery coming up, which has been on the cards for like the last nearly six years. Um, it's a far bigger surgery than I anticipated, so I do want to put on some weight, which is super hard when you eat nothing but saturated fats and uh, animal flesh. It's really difficult to pack on size and mass. So my strategy here going forward, I've just sourced a dairy farm. It's about 25 minute drive from my house, if that. Um, you just rock up there and they've got this little milk shack and you go in there and you, um, you put coins in, it's like three pounds for two liters of raw unpasteurized milk. You fill up your carton and you can fill them up to your heart's content as long as they've got enough in that machine. But they've, they've obviously taken the the raw milk from the cow, it's filtered and then it's just kept cold and you pour it straight into a carton and go home. And it's awesome. So I can literally access that anytime I want. So the idea is that going forward, and I'm going to start tomorrow, um, because I just want to start putting on weight. I felt a little bit colder this winter because I have lost what looks like the majority of my body fat. I, I don't know what I am. I haven't looked into it or anything, but I guess I would say like I'm easily 10% maybe body fat. Um, which sounds great, like if you want to take your top off and show everybody how great you look, I'm not really about that. I just want to be healthy and thrive. I have noticed like I've been colder, you know, this winter's just dropped off super quick. The last couple of days have, have been really, really cold. Um, and I'm even going to bed in clothes. <laughs> so I would like to pack on some mass. I would even consider having some berries and things like that if they were local um, and in season, like perfectly ripe. But you know, look out, look outside, but it's, there's, there's nothing there to eat. So um, I'm going to go and source this dairy and going forward, I think I'm going to aim to drink maybe two litres of this raw milk every day. Um, I'm going to add some salmon back in, I think once a week, I've been craving the salmon. 
Um, I don't think it had any adverse effects. I'm just wondering whether to stay off the pork. So for me going forward, I think I'm just going to be a very strict carnivore. I'm going to implement some raw dairy to try and gain weight for my surgery. And then after that, I'll probably rid milk and then just continue eating mostly red meat, um, some fish, some organs here and there, and some unpasteurized dairy, but not milk. Milk I'm going to use as a tool to try and gain weight. Um, this is where I think when you have that sugar being 50% and the fat being 50%, it's, that's when you activate the Randall cycle. That's when you get into this super growth state, which is why mammals drink milk when they're young, right? You want to grow, you want to thrive, you want to get healthy. I think I may even drink some of this milk in recovery as well. I mean, the nutrients are it's so nutrient dense because it's not been destroyed, right, with pasteurization. You've, it's not been heat treated and they've sapped these kind of um, enzymes out that, that help break down the dairy. That's why so many people are lactose intolerant. That's, that's for another day. I don't really see it to be that necessary to stay on this diet. It's like, I've already experienced massive benefits just going into the carnivore diet. I do believe pork is a bit of a problem for me. And I have found if I consume too much dairy, I crave food more. I almost want to snack more. Hopefully that's helpful if you haven't heard of the lion diet or if you've been pondering, you know, transitioning and, and being even more strict with your diet, then by all means, I, I think that it has a lot of potential to help a lot of people because I have noticed some changes. I have definitely had more energy. And I would say if you have a problem with snacking and being hungry and, and you know, just regulating for your mood and your energy, this to me is the absolute ultimate diet. You know, if you feel like you need to intervene on your health, you, you want change and you want change in a real meaningful way, not medication, not therapy or even yoga. Like you, you don't even need to go for a run, right? I haven't done any exercise. My job's quite physical, but I haven't done any real exercise. I've not really increased my heart rate and, you know, exhausted myself for a really long time. I, I think that why would I want to do that anyway? That I believe that, you know, do less is probably better in, in that sense. Um, don't be a bum, don't be lazy, you know, have goals and get out in the world, get up in the morning, go down with the sun, breathe in fresh air, take your shoes off, get some sun, utilise vitamin D and all of these things. Um, I just think that...